Hi everybody, Lee again, and I'm going to provide a quick tutorial for you for printing with HP latex printers that include white ink for uh, how to work with them in Onyx, an Onyx white ink workflow. So let's get rolling. I have Onyx up on screen here. I happen to be using Thrive. This will work with a variety of Onyx products. Uh, Thrive is just what I happen to have on this computer. Uh, and I actually have both printer categories or, or series, if you will, of printer that are latex printers that include white ink. So that's the R series, our, our flatbed printers, and now our new 700 and 800 white printers. Those are our, our smaller roll-to-roll -roll printers that do include white as well. Fundamentally, they're going to work mostly the same. When we get to an area where there are going to be differences between the R series and the 700 and 800 series, I will point those out to you. So first thing I want to do is open up a file that already has white in it. And if you've watched some of my other white tutorial videos, this should look a little bit familiar. Uh, let's start with, uh, we'll start with the boom vector one. So that was a file that I used for working in Adobe Illustrator to create white. All right, so we have the file open in Job Editor, and you can see here that everything is colored green because that is how Onyx displays white. Um, this preview is low res. If that bothers you while you're working with this, you can just come down here and hit this Apply button and it'll just reprocess the preview at a higher resolution so that you can see it a little bit a little bit better and there you can see it at a much higher resolution now i already have the green in here because my file already contained all of the green information if you remember that that tutorial video and i can see that it has green if i look on the bottom here when i move my mouse I see my actual build out. So I see cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and then I see S1, which is spot one, which in this case is white. Uh, and if you recall from any of my tutorial videos regarding adding white, uh, spot one is what we're calling it. So if I hover my mouse over this area, which is mostly, a, it's a yellow, I see a little bit of, of cyan, a little bit of magenta, a bunch of yellow, and then and no black, and then 100% spot one. And actually, as I move this around, you can see my CMYK build change and my spot one remains the same because in this particular instance, I'm doing a, a solid fill around this shape of white. There's, there's no shades of white. There's no tints that I'm using. So at this point, I see that my file is ready that it, it's, it accepted my white. Um, what I need to do now is choose a print mode that supports white. And in the case of the 700 and 800 white, um, anything that has a W like these items right here, so 12 past six color white, and then spot 110, uh, that would be SP would be a spot mode. And if you refer back to my white printing modes, video, you would see that spot is not going to be appropriate in this case because I have white and color that are overlapping each other. Uh, that would lead to some bad results. Uh, so I would probably choose in this case, likely either, either an over flood, which would be color and then white printed on top. So if I were printing this on clear material and I wanted to print the, the back side, right? So that we have a, a reverse print or what's called a second surface print. Or if I'm printing, let's just say on a, on a gray material or a black material or anything like that, I can choose under flood and that would print the white first and then print the color on top. So we'll do over flood um, just so we can choose. Nothing really changes uh, about my preview here. Okay. And I can hit apply one more time. Just it'll apply any color management that's... Uh, that's appropriate for this. And you'll see it's, it's, you won't necessarily see major changes on screen, but there could be a, a color profile difference between different modes that we've chosen. And this will reflect those, those color profile changes. 
So now I have a mode, which in this case is an overflood. Remember that's color and then white on top of it, which means it's gonna be printed on the back side of clear material, which really means that I need to flip this image around so that when I look at the, the non-printed side, which is the side that, that I would be looking through, uh, that this would be right reading. So we'll, we'll get to that in another portion of this job editor. I just wanted to point that out now. Uh, preview and size, this is where I get to choose the size of my artwork. I'm gonna leave this alone, but over here, here's mirror. And if I choose mirror and then hit apply again, watch what happens. And there we go. Now it's now it's backwards. And so when I print it and then look through the material, it'll be right reading. Now, what I want to show you is over here, which is color correction. And if I go specifically over here to the tools button, I can choose the spot layer tool. Now, right now we have artwork in my file already. OK, I have all of this all laid out. Uh, my white artwork ready to go. But if I didn't, this is where I would choose it. And I'll show you that on a different file. Let me go back to the rip and let me open a different file. And I am going to choose this image right here. And this is where I was talking about. If I choose open in job editor, it will automatically open job editor. Otherwise, it'll just rip the file and leave it in the queue for me. And I would have to right click the job and manually open it in the job editor. So I'm going to hit open here and it's going to copy it over and start processing this job for the job editor. OK, so now we have this file in here and let's say I'm going to do an under flood for this one. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't physically have a printer hooked up to this training computer, so I'm not going to ever hit print. Um, so how I, how I send it over doesn't really matter in this case. Uh, but I don't have any white. If I look at my callouts down here, I don't, I don't have anything for S1. So in this particular case, I need to add white ink. And so I will go to that color correction and then tools and spot layer tool. And now what I'm going to do is enable spot layer generation. If I just choose flood fill, watch what happens. Now it's just giving me edge to edge coverage in this case of white ink. And now if you look at my build down here, you can see it's S1 never varies from 100%. It's always 100. Now, there are other options available in here. And some of the other options, the one that people will gravitate toward definitely is fill image area. Fill image area is going to, anytime that there is a non-white pixel in my artwork, it will put white behind it. So it'll put white behind all these pencils. But watch what happens. Here's the problem that you can get into with doing this. If I fill image area, look at what happened there. So what I have is at the boundaries of my image, I have something other than solid white. So right here, if you look at my bill down below, right here, I'm at 0000, zero, zero, zero CMYK. But if I come over here a little bit, I just have a touch of cyan, magenta, and yellow, 1.2% of each, barely visible, but because it's not zeros all the way across the board, Onyx is automatically going to add white to that. And this green is what's going to print white. So I'm going to get this weird halo around here. I'm going to get this solid area with no white ink, but then a border around the edge because it's just a bit. You see 2.7, 1.6, 2.0, and 0. And this area here complete with all this fuzz. So it's tempting to choose fill image area, but it can run into problems. And the other direction can be a problem as well, which is if I have a photo, let's say a portrait of somebody's face, well, a lot of times the highlights in somebody's eyes will have zero ink. And so what'll happen in that case is it will not print white where that, what we call a specular highlight is. 
If we do that and we end up with a pinhole in the white, then really the part of my image that most needs white ink behind it or in front of it, depending, is the part that's not going to get it. So you can use this when it when it, you think it's going to work for you, but always, always, always double check before committing to print. Always double check what your white is going to look like. So let's go back over to this file here. We have this and we already have white information in my artwork. Um, if I decide last minute, you know, I want to have something here. I want to completely flood fill this white. I can do that and I can just turn on spot layer generation and I can do flood fill. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things to look out for. And the big one is that because I already have white in my artwork, anything I do here is going to add to what my artwork is. It's not going to subtract. So even though I've cho chosen no white, it still has white in there. We talked earlier about fill image area, which isn't going to look any different, but the opposite of that is actually fill non image area. Uh, and in that case, it's actually leaving everywhere that has ink alone and it's only filling the spots that are totally white. The version of that on this would look like this fill non image area. So only the perfectly white pixels would get white ink. So, oh, so back over to this one. Um, if I have white in my artwork, I can't necessarily just ignore the white, right? I can't override what's there. I can add to it, but I can't subtract to what's in my art file. So just something to keep in mind. Let me turn that off. And the next step here, bleed grommets and marks, if that uh, makes sense to do that. And I'll leave that for another tutorial or, or Onyx has some great videos on how to how to do these things. Uh, this is a, a just a wonderful tab. And then the last item here is print. And print, I can choose my number of copies. I can give it a job name. But if I go to print setup, this is kind of cool. So if I go to print setup, and come over there, right? So I should show, so edit printer settings. So over here, and this should be on by default, um, but if it isn't, this is where you would look for it is in that edit printer settings right there. Um, I have this white choke control, right? Which right now is set up for three pixels. And that choke is, pulling that white ink a little bit from the edges because the white drops are a little bit wider than the color drops. And you'll have to experiment with your particular machine what it, what the uh, the number of pixels are, okay? Uh, three is is pretty pretty good number. Now, if you are doing this on an R series, I don't even believe you will have choke control here, but even if you do, there's no reason to use it because you actually have the ability to control the choke on the embedded print server, the, the internal print server, so the touch screen that's, that's on the printer itself. And you can vary that at will. So don't do anything with choke here. Send it over to the R series, and then you can apply the choke there and there's there's some nice features to a white choke on on that printer so white choke control is set to three pixels which is good which means when it prints it'll actually shrink this just three pixels just a tiny 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 amount it'll shrink that in so i'll go oh yeah i'll hit okay and then at that point i can just submit the job all right let's go back over here Let's do a probably a, uh, a flood fill instead. And I can send that job. All right, we're going to start with sandwich mode for the Latex 700 and 800 series printers. And we'll do the R series in a moment. 
So the first thing I want to do is choose a sandwich mode. So if I come over here to my print mode, I need to find something with SW, which is sandwich. So I will choose my sandwich mode. And again, nothing really changes on screen. I'm not going to reprocess this or anything yet. And I'm going to come over to color correction and I need to create my spot layer, right? So again, that's spot layer tool, right? Enable spot layer generation and then flood fill in this case is what I'm going to do, right? So solid. So now that I have this, the last step or not really the last step, but close to it is to come over to my print tab and in print, I'm going to choose print setup and then I'm going to edit my printer settings. And specifically over here, we have this section, right? Edit printer settings. It brings up this dialog box and it's color white color, which is exactly what sandwich mode is on the latex 700 and 800 series color, then white, then color on top. So we are going to choose color, white color, same as side A. It's going to be just a duplicate of this. There are others that we can choose here, but specifically we're choosing same as side A because it, in this example, we're going to pretend that this is going to be illuminated from the front or the viewing side during the day and then illuminated from the non-viewing side backlit at night. Uh, so in that case, what we're going to do is the, the machine will automatically dim uh, or dull the color of the non-viewing layer so that it gives a boost without making everything look too cartoonish and, and oversaturated. So we're going to choose same as side A because that's the one that makes sense to us. If I were going to do a double sided like a cling or something like that, then perhaps I would choose a different file. So I'll hit OK here. I'll hit OK here. And then I will hit OK here. My settings have changed. It wants to update my settings. Yes. And then I'm going to go ahead and submit the job. And when I submit this job, we should see once it processes how this is going to happen. So here we have a sandwich mode. If I print this at this point, and again, I don't really have a printer connected. So let me put this one on hold. Let me put this one on hold so that this job is the only one that's actually in the queue. Go ahead and print. And look at what it did. It created a secondary file. As soon as I hit print, it created a secondary file. And now I can hit print now again. At the printer, it will combine those two images and set everything up so that we are in proper sandwich mode. So that's how we do sandwich mode on the Latex 700 and 800 white printers. Now let me show you how we do it on the R series printers. So I'll choose R series here, the R2000 plus. I will open that same job. Open in job editor. And there's our file. So we'll choose, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I know that in my generic plastic solid, I have a lot of different modes. Um, but here's the big difference. What's going to happen here, I have generic plastic solid chosen. And they do have some sandwich modes here. I am not going to process this job as sandwich mode. What I'm going to do, and there's two different sandwich modes available on the R series. There's a three layer, which is color, white, color. And there's actually a five layer blockout mode, which is color, white, black, white, color. Regardless of which I'm choosing to print, I'm going to here either choose an over flood or an under flood at the appropriate white density. So or a color density rather. So let's say I, I'm going to set up, uh, if I look over some of them here, one, 100 and 130, right? If I see my three layers here, 100, 130. So I'll choose an ink density that's about 130. 120 is going to be close for this. So it doesn't matter whether I'm choosing over flood or under flood. 
I'm just going to choose some mode that has over flood or under flood. And once I've done that, I'll go to my color correction. I'll go to my spot layer tool. I'll turn the spot layer generation on flood fill. In this particular case, if I already have white in my artwork, I don't need to do this certainly. And then here, I'll show you what the print setup looks like on the R series and printer settings. It is definitely different than on the 700 and 800 series. So in this case, my sandwich mode, I'm actually choosing off. Right. Um, so the driver is in there, uh, but in this case, I'm going to keep it as off. And I don't have the ability to flip my image here. So instead, if I go to my output tab, and this is pretty universal for Onyx, I can reflect at print time. So I will rip this job as an overflood. I will send it over to my printer as an overflood. And then at the printer in the, in the interface, uh, the user interface in the printer itself, then I will just go in and change the mode to a sandwich mode. When I do that, the, the IPS, the, the, uh, the, the print server there will automatically add that second layer of color and it will automatically dim it down. And uh, I will be ready to run at that point. So a little bit different than the way it works with the 700 and 800 series because we don't have that, that internal print server uh, to the same extent. We have, we have a front panel where I can reprint, but not a front panel where I can really change modes of jobs the same way that I can with the, the R series. Now, the last thing that I want to show you and I know this video is getting a little long, my apologies. I like to keep them short, but there's a lot to talk about. If I go and open a new file and I'll grab my pencils again, but I'm not going to hit open yet. I'm going to come over here to my quick sets. So quick sets are, oops, I need to change my printer for the really cool quick sets here. Um, quick sets here are templates that I can open a job into that allow me to very quickly make all of the changes that I just made in the job editor. So if I choose as an example, a white two layers, white under flood, so that means white then color is printed, under flood job, auto white, it's automatically going to add white, it's gonna set me up as an under flood and watch what happens when I go ahead and open this job. So look at that. We have our file already. It's chosen an under flood mode for us. And it's already put, if I go to color correction and spot layer tool, it's automatically enabled spot layer generation. Come over here. White choke control has been applied. And it did not flip it for me because we don't necessarily know how you're using this job. Uh, so you still do need to do that. So I would go print setup, go into my output tab, reflect at print time. Send that job over to my queue and it would be ready to send to my printer. So we covered a ton of topics today. If you have questions, uh, you can put them in the comments down below. You can reach out to me in numerous ways. Look me up. I'm everywhere. Uh, and uh, I, I hope this has been very helpful for you. Thanks for joining me. Bye.